everyone, I'm Ashley of Anne Cosplay, and today I'm gonna be showing you how I made. Oh, this looks really scary, it's just like a severed head. Anyway, I'm gonna be showing you how I made my vigilante mask, as well as a few other little details I ended up just working on while I was working on this. This is actually part two of my build for this cosplay, so if you haven't checked out part one yet, you should go ahead and do that, especially if you're interested in building in the whole cosplay. In that video, I build pretty much everything else. I do all the armor and I give all the patterns for free in that video. So yeah, definitely start there if you're very interested in making this whole cosplay. A lot of people were asking about it. I wasn't originally gonna make it, but I thought I've never made anything like this before. So let's give it a try. I ended up actually pretty much liking it a lot in the end. I don't really know how often I'll wear it, but it'll look really cool just hanging out on my shelf. <laughs> I'm gonna provide as much of my patterns as I can, but to be honest, the base for the face shell, I did modify it, but I did purchase it from Cosplay Apprentice on Etsy. They have a ton of awesome resources and great patterns, but I actually started with their Spider-Man face shell because it was just an amazing base. So I definitely encourage you to go over to that Etsy, check it out. That, that specific pattern is only like $3.99, which is a steal for such an awesome pattern. It is so versatile. I'm gonna use this on like a ton of other costumes. Like for my Gwena mask, it's great. Totally encourage you to check it out. So that's gonna be below along with all my patterns that I made in addition to that, like the lens shape and these pieces on the outside. Also in this video, I kind of mess around with some weapons and props in it. So I do end up making some details for my belt, a holster for my belt to hold a pistol and messing around with some like knife setup for the back of my belt. So that'll also be just kind of like drizzled in this video for extra fun, I guess. <laughs> Anyway, I do also want to preface this by saying like my cosplay is not screen accurate whatsoever. This mask is far from accurate, but I think it's very close. It looks really cool. Obviously, you know what it is, but I really wanted to do something very DIY with a lot of basic materials that you can make completely yourself. I did it for under 30 bucks, if that, so it's a pretty good deal. Anyway, if you're looking for a way to finish off your costume or just make a really cool mask, keep watching and here we go. Okay, so I tried to make my own face shell pattern, but it was a disaster. Instead, I ended up starting with Cosplay Apprentice's face shell pattern intended for Spider-Man cosplays, but I modified it for this and I scaled it down to 94% to use for myself, and it worked out perfectly. I'm just cutting it out on my Cricut here only because I don't own a printer. It's probably really weird to own a Cricut, but not a printer. Anyway, I use this a lot for 2mm foam, but I don't actually use it on my build. This is just to get my pattern in hand. This pattern is so great, and it's only $3.99 on Etsy. Like, it is absolutely worth it for this resource. I love the stuff that they put out. The only modification I really made apart from scaling it down is I taped it together and I basically wanted to close up the Spider-Man eye hole because we're not going to need that on this. I won't go into like super great detail on how to assemble this because they have really great instructions with that pattern, um, but you can kind of see here how I did modify it to remove the eye. I can't give this to you because you have to go purchase their pattern, but if you want to make adjustments like removing the Spider-Man eye, I just taped up the actual pattern as a little mock-up and then I filled it in with some paper, cut it apart again, and this was my pattern for my 4mm foam. For Christmas, I got the complete set of cos tools and I was so excited to actually finally use one of the pieces. I was using the smallest hole punch drill, uh, I forget the technical name, but I used this to put all the holes around the forehead and the mouth so that this could be vented a little bit and I could actually breathe and not suffocate myself with EVA foam. You could easily do this with any other tool, but I was really excited to try out this new tool. It's really cool. And then I just used contact cement to glue the pattern together, glue the two halves together, and eventually I used some heat to form it a little bit better and stick it right on my face. I got a simple black Zentai hood off of Amazon for about $10, which is a steal. It has a zipper in the back and it's got a lot of seams on it. It's not totally screen accurate really whatsoever, but it worked really well and for that price, it's a steal. I only had to even modify it like a tiny amount as far as sewing goes and uh, well, this looks like a scene out of the office with like the first aid scene, but I stuck it on my face and I'm just trying to slide this Zentai hood over it just to get an idea of the fit. Um, this is, none of this looks normal. <laughs> 
After putting it on and checking what it looked like in the video, I realized that it was kind of not fitting right to the forehead of my face shell. You can see how the seam is sticking up. So I ended up just running this through my sewing machine to correct it and make it fit like more tight and nicer. You could honestly leave it be if you want. The effect would still be there, but I did my editing by putting it on the face shell inside out and I took some of my little wonder clips and just clipped it all the way down along that seam until it was like nice and tight on the face shell and this is what I put through my sewing machine. And I just used a little zigzag stitch to make sure it could still stretch. Uh, nothing fancy. Here was the updated and it's so much better and in fact when it's like pulled tight on my head it just like disappears. A lot of this footage just looks insane but there's no not awkward way to do it. Basically, I was getting really sick of putting the face shell on and then like recording video so I could see what it looked like So I was just cutting like tiny little holes right in front of my eyes so I could see through this and actually move on It's giving Jason vibes right now for sure, but like Jason's sad step brother <laughs> Continuing with the weirdness, I put it on and looked into a mirror referencing a lot of photos and tried to sketch out that lens shape on the face shell because I was going to have to completely cut the shape of the lens into an opening on the face shell. So I'm sketching out that V-shaped visor he's got going on. And I made absolutely sure I liked it before I cut into it. It took a little bit of manhandling, but I eventually got this V-shaped visor part cut out of the face shell. Um, the edge was not clean whatsoever, but you really don't need to worry about that because the like little edge details on the lens that's going to go over this really covers up a lot of mistakes. Before moving on from the face shell, I did dremel the edges of it just to kind of help it blend in just into my head, I guess, to get rid of that seam when the mask is over it. Once again, I'm putting the face shell on with the mask over it. I put this on and took it off like a million times because I just want to be absolutely sure what I was doing was right. But yeah, I put it on and I just kind of felt for where I wanted it to be put in place and then I used some chalk to mark where the uh, the visor was underneath the mask. Basically I'm just trying to mark out where I need to cut the matching hole in the mask so that there's like, you know, can see. <laughs> Following those chalk marks I made, I used my scissors to cut a corresponding hole in the mask. Um, I didn't go all the way to the edge of where my marks were. I really just kind of wanted to keep this smaller than I thought I needed it because it's really stretchy and I didn't want to cut away too much and ruin the whole thing. I'd rather do little and cut more after. Here's how it looked with the hole cut in it. Uh, don't worry if it's looking messy like this because I did end up gluing the fabric right around the hole in the face shell. That way it wasn't like stretching all crazy like this. So it doesn't look this messy in the end. You just gotta trust the process. I decided to start making the visor, that way I can kind of check it against the mask before I permanently attached anything. I just stuck some tape directly to the face shell, that way I could trace it out on top of it and know that it was going to fit the hole I already have there. And then I just very carefully traced out my lens. I looked at a lot of references and I used a straight edge and just tried to make sure this thing was symmetrical and looked really nice. When I was happy with it, I just peeled the tape off and used it to trace it on foam. I used 2mm foam for this little lens frame piece, as well as the little detail pieces that kind of go on the corners that just add a little bit more dimension. I use super glue to attach the detail pieces to the little lens frame piece. Uh, you can use hot glue or contact cement, but I just grabbed what was in front of me. I went ahead and painted this little lens frame at this stage before it was attached to anything else. That way it would be nice and easy and I wouldn't get paint everywhere. I just painted it silver and I used some dry brushed black to give dimension to those details I added and make it look a little dirty and grungy, which I always love in cosplays. 
Now for the actual lens. I used some pieces of gels that I got on Amazon. I think it was a 10 pack and it was about $10. These worked great, but to be honest, I wish I got red or like a red or orange or maybe a variety pack where I could layer red and orange to get the color I want because his lens is a lot more red than mine ended up being, but I don't know, it looks cool anyway and I just kind of went with it. It also looks a lot like how his lens looks in the comic, so whatever, I don't really care. <laughs> So yeah, I'm using the same pattern that I used for the little frame detail and just transferring that to these gels and I can just cut them out with scissors. They're pretty rigid but easy to cut and like, not soft isn't the right word, but they're bendable enough to use for this. I ended up layering, I don't remember if I layered three or four together at this point, but yeah, I just layered a bunch together to get the desired like opacity that I wanted. I don't think I took video of it, but the I took the three or four pieces of lens that I had and used a tiny amount of tape to kind of wrap them together. You can see it on the edges. And then I just like hot glued the crap out of it onto those like little two millimeter foam frame detail thingy piece. I don't know what to call all these pieces, but yeah, I hot glued the actual lens to the little like visor frame. That's it. Got it. At this point, because I no longer needed the face shell for patterning anything, I used a little bit more hot glue and just glued the fabric of the mask down around the edges of the hole for the visor. That way it wouldn't be sliding all over the place and I decided that I didn't actually want it removable. I just thought I'd go all in and make the attachment permanent, but then I wouldn't have to worry about it. To help me out with the next several steps, you don't have to do this, but I used one of my wig heads to put the mask situation onto. Uh, this particular wig head, I actually added material to the back of it to make it a little bit more closer to my actual head size, because these wig heads, they, they ain't real head size. It was just a lot easier to like grab onto the mask and maneuver it with it on the wig head, but yeah, once I had this in place and held down, I hot glued the whole lens situation onto the mask permanently. I thought about using magnets, but the shape of it just didn't really work well, and I thought I was just going to commit and stick that thing on there. It was at this point that I was getting like so stoked because I put it on and was like, wow, this thing might actually work. But yeah, I put it on and I looked in the mirror to start marking out the details where there's like the blue and white V shapes that kind of match the armor on the top of the mask. So I used some chalk to roughly mark that out. Uh, I just wanted to be extra careful, put it on my head so that I knew those shapes would be the right shape. This is why it's really nice to be working with this on a wig head, but yeah, once I had that shape roughly marked out, I put it on the wig head and then just kind of used the chalk to make those lines a little neater and smoother because I can only do so much on the back of my head. I decided to use paint on it instead of fabric or any other technique because I knew it would match the paint on my armor. In fact, I had the exact mixed paint from my armor still saved in one of these plastic containers, which are just really handy to keep your paint from drying out. but. I needed to mix more so I could actually show you the mix I did. I used the Plaid FX blue paint, it's the smooth satin finish. I poured some of that in along with some more Plaid FX white paint and a tiny little bit of green to get the blue tone that I wanted. Then I mixed this textile medium into it, which is what makes any acrylic paint work really well on fabric. It kind of waters it down a lot, but it makes it a little bit stretchy, it's not hard, it just is a much better result than if you were to put plain acrylic on any sort of fabric. Over the course of several days, I added my layers of paint. Days is kind of dramatic, I just <laughs> was running out of time during the day, but I did do, I think it was like three coats of the blue and four of the white, just because it does absorb in a lot, especially on like the first two coats, so don't get nervous if it looks like all cloudy and crappy for the first few coats. I just realized I never changed my sweater because this is like five days later when I added the fourth and final coat. <laughs> it's like really embarrassing. But yeah, anyway, I'm on the fourth coat here and you can see how nice and like smooth and even it looks. But anyway, between all those coats, I decided to work on some prop weapons. I had these pistols from another cosplay that I spray painted silver and then I got these like plastic practice knives that I thought matched really well. 
So yeah, I spray painted these off camera. They were originally like black and then I had painted them gold for another cosplay. Now they're silver and now I'm weathering them with some watered down black acrylic paint, but they look really nice. It is so hard to find solid references right now, probably because this show is like weeks old, but yeah, I did the best I could with screen caps of the back of the costume, and these were the closest knives I could find. He has like two knives crisscrossed and holsters on the back of his belt, um, and these looked like really spot on, but all I did was I unscrewed these little like webbing pieces that were on the knives. And then I used some silver acrylic, dry brushed it along the edges just to make them look more realistic and actually sharp and not like the rubber they actually are. To get these knives in their little crisscross situation, I used some E6000 to attach the plastic like little holster pieces together to each other and I just set that aside to let that sit overnight. I still haven't actually finished this and attached it to my belt, but I think I'll do it with uh, some Velcro. And then I decided I really wanted to make a simple little holster since he does have like one pistol holstered on the right side of his belt. So I didn't make this very screen accurate once again, but it definitely works. So I just used my favorite method for making basic gun holsters, which is taking a piece of paper, folding it in half, you trace your gun, you flip the gun over and trace it again, and then you can use that to make your pattern. You can make almost any holster for any sized gun with this method. Um, I've used it many times before. It's the tried and true method. I really like making holsters. Something about it is like really satisfying. And then I transferred my crazy looking pattern to two millimeter foam that matched the rest of my costume. I used a lot of heat to kind of warp it around the gun and get it to kind of mold to the shape of it. And I used a little bit of contact cement along the edge and it was pretty much done. I don't know, something about having a prop gun hanging off of you in a holster feels pretty badass, so I like it. Like I said, I didn't actually attach the little knife pieces yet, but this is essentially what they'd look like at some point. Okay, back to the mask. It was done. All I did was weather it with a little bit of dry brushed black acrylic again just to match the rest of my costume, and this thing was ready to roll. Hello, it's me about to get ready to take photos for this video, <laughs> but I was reminded while I was getting ready, somebody on Facebook actually asked if I could show what to do with long hair under like cloth masks like this. And um, it's really simple. It's pretty much just like putting a wig on, but figured I would go through that now and show how crazy it is to put it on. <laughs> so I start with one of these like uh, net caps, which is like my favorite type of wig cap. So we're just gonna put it on. Mm -mm -mm. Please excuse the lack of makeup right now. The really nice thing about this is I don't have to do my makeup or care what I look like under this mask. <laughs> oh, basically, yeah, I get this on. Uh, I don't even need to do it as nicely as I do with a wig, but put it on and I got a little clippy to just clip that down. But don't stop there, especially if you have a lot of hair. <laughs> um, also get, and these can be in any color. Honestly, I probably should be using black, but you don't really see it through the mask. Um, but then I use one of these weird nylon ones over top of it and I like try to because I don't like uh, I don't braid my hair or anything so it's just like loose back here so I make sure when I put it on I like scoop that up in the back um, <laughs> basically trying to smooth my head out as much as possible <laughs> yeah okay cool so now that we're looking like an egg we're good to go <laughs> um so I haven't like fully put this on before. <laughs> I am just going to pretty much like smack this on my face and like line up the foam stuff on my face and then I'll pull the rest on and like really yank my head in there. <laughs> so pretty much just boop and find the right spot and <laughs> I'm having issues with this fogging too. Uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna like pull it really tight. <sighs> okay, apparently I have a really big head. All right, cool. So there we go. <laughs> At long last, we have the final build, even though I guarantee I'm going to continue to work on this costume and add more details for a very long time, but I am so happy with how this is looking. 
Thank you guys so much for watching and joining me on this crazy build journey, and I really hope it helps with your own build. I can't wait to see what you make.